This is KGW News at Noon. Students from all over Portland are marching this noon, demanding action on climate change. They walked out of class for what they're calling a climate strike. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. This started about an hour ago at Portland City Hall. Mike Benner is with the students as they get ready to march to Revolution Hall. Mike. Well, Brenda, good afternoon and tell you what, there are a lot of students out here. Take a live look here. There's so many people out here that have actually spilled into the street. We're talking about Southwest 4th. I would say there are hundreds, if not more than 1,000 students from the Portland metro area out here. They walked out of class and they are bringing attention uh, to climate justice. Uh, we saw them uh, speak and uh, chant uh, over the course of the last hour. And as you mentioned, uh, any moment now, they will march across the Hawthorne Bridge and over to Revolution Hall, where there will be a climate festival this afternoon. But this group, uh, what they're out here doing is, uh, again, calling attention to climate justice and calling out what they call uh, climate villains. There are four of them. We're talking about ODOT, uh, Zenith Energy, the Portland Business Alliance, and Northwest Natural. And the demands among uh, these students out here, they want to see these companies and organizations divest in fossil fuels. They want to see more green infrastructure built in the area, and they do not want to see any widening of highways. So those are some of their demands. Again, they'll be marching uh, from City Hall uh, here in downtown Portland to Revolution Hall in Southeast Portland any moment. Uh, we'll be following uh, them on this march, of course, and we'll have a live report on KGW uh, News at four this afternoon. For now, though, Brenda, I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, we'll be watching for that. Mike, thanks. Here are some of the other local headlines we're tracking this afternoon. We just got an update on the delayed ballot counting in Clackamas County. Thousands of ballots have a blurry barcode that the machines can't count. That means they need to be hand counted. Clackamas County Elections Clerk Sherry Hall said today that 200 county employees have signed up to help count those ballots. Clark, Marion and Washington counties are also sending workers to help. Only 27,000 ballots have been counted so far, and we expect about 90,000 voters in this election. Hall says updated numbers will be posted every night at 7. Renee Gonzalez still holds a lead over Vadim Mozerski for second place in the race for Portland City Commissioner. Joanne Hardesty, the incumbent, has already secured a spot in the runoff this November. As of yesterday, Multnomah County elections still had about 25,000 ballots left to count. I-5 in Kelso is back open today after weather caused multiple crashes. A hailstorm hit around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. There were trucks, cars, and a motorcycle involved in one crash. The driver of the motorcycle died. Northbound lanes of I-5 shut down for hours during that investigation. And those are some of your local headlines. Hail wasn't the only issue yesterday. Take a look at this. Here are photos near Canby after lightning struck that tree. Just before 2 in the afternoon, 911 got a call from someone saying that tree exploded, sending debris everywhere. The caller just wanted to make sure that everybody in the house was okay. And the good news is they were. No one was injured. Boy, no sign of severe weather today. It's just cloudy. We can give you a live look from our Rose City Sky Cam. So, Rod, is the metro area going to see any sun later this afternoon? Why don't you ask me if we're going to see any rain? Because that's an easier <laughs> question to answer. And the answer to that one is no. The sun question, Brenda, is becoming somewhat of a mystery. It might be later today before we reverse this trend and start to blow out the low cloud deck. This is a visible satellite picture and you see from my story Longview Portland. It's all pretty solid. You've actually seen a reinforcing shot of some clouds coming down from the north. So areas down towards Salem and out in the Yamhill County where it was quite sunny this morning actually showing a little bit of 
cloudiness now as well. Now, even with the clouds, we're at 54 degrees and uh, even if we just get late day sun, I think we still have a chance to at least get up into the 60s. Totally dry. There's no risk for uh, any rain if you're going to be outdoors recreating or playing this afternoon. You see some golfers at the Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club out in a low of 54 degrees. That was sunny earlier this morning, and this was clear earlier this morning. Now it's clouding up out in the gorge. This is Elk Ridge Golf Course uh, in Carson on the Washington side. So... I don't think we're going to see much change at least through two o'clock, maybe not until after three. If we get just a couple of hours of late afternoon sun, we could still get up to 65 degrees. Weekend forecast is dry. It is warmer. We'll have those details for you coming up. We'll see you then. Thank you, Rod. Washington Senator Patty Murray is proposing money to expand access to child care as that industry faces rising costs and not enough staff. Essentially, Senator Murray proposed in addition to the Build Back Better bill. It would put money toward raising wages for Head Start teachers, give more subsidies to parents, and work to make child care more affordable. This week, eight Washington moms with kids in Head Start traveled to the nation's capital to share their experiences and ask the federal government for help. Even the access to resources for families um, that are paired with these early learning programs, all of that will be lost and people will just be so far behind and we can't afford to have that happen. To learn more about Senator Murray's proposal, you can head to our website, kgw.com. U.S. military aid is on the way to Ukraine. This ship carrying vehicles and equipment unloaded in Germany, the supplies will be transported the rest of the way by road. Now these supplies are desperately needed as Russian forces show signs of progress in eastern Ukraine. Here's Aaron McLaughlin. Heavy fighting continues in the Donbass region overnight. President Zelensky saying that everything in Donbass has been destroyed, comparing the situation there to hell. This is all eyes are on the city of Severodonetsk, where Russian forces are pushing closer and closer to the city, killing 12 civilians, according to Ukrainian officials, in the shelling. The concern among Ukrainian officials is if they take that city, then Russia will control the whole of the Luhansk portion of the Donbass region. This is all eyes continue to be on the steel plant in the devastated port city of Mariupol, where the evacuations continue. We heard from Ukrainian commander overnight releasing a video saying that the defense of the steel plant has stopped. They're now focusing on saving lives. They've managed to evacuate all civilians, all of the wounded fighters, he said. And now they're focusing on evacuating the deceased. His hope is, is that the dead bodies of the fallen and soldiers will be returned to Ukrainian controlled territory so they can be buried by their loved ones. Aaron McLaughlin, NBC News, Kharkiv, Ukraine. Two Secret Service employees on President Biden's security detail are on leave today after an incident in South Korea. The Associated Press reports an agent and an armed physical security specialist were off duty and went out drinking. When they got back to the Grand Hyatt Hotel, there was a heated argument with the taxi driver while they were apparently intoxicated and a police report was filed. The Secret Service members were there ahead of President Biden's visit to South Korea. They've been sent home while an investigation is underway. Former Gonzaga point guard and NBA player John Stockton is facing new controversy today. He wrote a letter of support for a Utah woman involved in the January 6th insurrection. Janet Bueller was arrested in July. She's since pleaded guilty to five misdemeanors and could go to prison. Bueller is married to one of Stockton's closest friends. In his letter, Stockton claimed to have spent time with her in social settings and in his own home. He said, quote, I frankly cannot imagine that Janet would knowingly break the law nor be involved in anything destructive ever. Stockton made headlines earlier this year when he had his season tickets suspended for refusing to comply with Gonzaga's mask mandate at games.